You really want to know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. What is going on, guys? This is Brown Superman's Comics, and we are back with another Superman's Comics and Friend podcast edition. This, I keep saying this is a special episode, but this truly is a special episode. You know how much we love independent, creator-owned, or small press comics on this channel, and we have a freaking killer special with some special guests to talk to you tonight. You might know them as the creators of the book Excellence, but I also... I can't introduce them together. They're so powerful, I have to introduce them once at a time. And the first one we have up is Brandon Thomas, the writer, the guy that puts prose to paper and creates this fantastic story and excellence. But he's written other books. He's written for other publishers. We're talking about Image, we're talking about Dynamite, we're talking about Forge and other creator-owned books. Brandon Thomas, how you doing? How you doing? Good to be here. Yes, we're getting some good stuff here. But with him, the guy that brings those words to life in the pictures on that book, Excellence. We got Kari Randolph. That's right. He likes to say Kari like Atari, and it helps so people get that name right. <laughs> he has drawn not only for Image, but he's drawn for DC. He's drawn for Marvel. He's drawn, he's had his drawings turned into the action figures. He's also drawn trading cards, which we're also going to talk about some more trading cards in this video. But Kari, how are you doing? Man, uh, listen, you said your intros were not good. That was fantastic. <laughs> I, I want to give you a round of applause. That was, that was, I've never had that much energy. That's great. I feel I wish, powerful now. I, I wish I could that. have walkout music for both of y'all. <laughs> I, have, I, have, oh, awesome. I have a thing. Whenever conventions come back, I am going to have walkout music because I feel like my entrance to the next convention I go to has to be magnificent. So I'm going to have some walkout music for do, sure. Do you have a specific walkout song in mind or is just you're going to have to think about it? I know I, I already know it. I already know it. You know um I don't know if you know hip hop uh but uh that song by Puffy and Biggie and Busta Rhymes called Victory. Yes. It's like the first one on on Diddy yes. album. I remember. It's just glorious. It is. That is a great to. beat. <laughs> do you have one in mind, Brandon? And I don't. I don't. It just in a past life, like when I was growing up, I always wanted to uh, play baseball professionally. I mean, I played all through uh, like school and high school. So I always wanted to be if, if I wasn't writing, <laughs> then I would want to be like, I want to play pro ball. Like I, I'm still anytime I kind of like drive past like a like a baseball diamond, like no matter how small it is, I was I was get that ache. Like I feel like I need to be out there somewhere. So, you know, Brandy, they're big you in the walk. Told Tom McFarlane that he would have lost his mind because that's the that's Tom true. I completely right forgot. I I completely forgot. I was so I was so struck in the moment that I didn't. I I, I could barely say anything. It was like I was twelve again. <laughs> I think I think if I did if I had a walkout song a walkout song for my own show I think I would go old school with some Beastie Boys Paul Revere or like some okay. Chub, some Chub Rock treat them right just because of Oh my god Chub Rock oh that <laughs> <laughs> All right look at that Yeah that might takes me back to like middle school there but oh middle school what a time what so, like how did we how did we get here? How did we get so old? No, right? It's you blink and it's you blink and it's I like, know. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. But I'm super thrilled and honored to have both of you on the show. Now you are part of the creative team of excellence. We do have some other ones with Amelia Lopez and Darren Bennett. Yes. And I'm I'm just proud I said Darren. If you're watching this, I'm proud I said your name right because I did want to call you <laughs> Duran a bunch of times. We all did <laughs> at, at, at one time or another, <laughs> but we have since been corrected. So yes. we love and Darren. For the for my viewers that are, I'm sure most of them, because a lot of people that watch this channel are also fans of Image. I say mm -hmm. Indie Comics. Indie Comics isn't right. It, it's it's kind of spread across now. It's easier to say creator own or smaller mm -hmm. press because. I would not say Skybound is really indie anymore. It's, just it's because, borderline. It's, yeah. it's you know, <laughs> depends on the day, you know. Right. It depends on where you are in the, in the I mean, we are more. Yeah. Robert Kirkman <laughs> is not right. indie, but us, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But I think I that's going to change with excellence because 
excellence even when it first launched it had buzz i remember when the first issue released there was a lot of the, the your news your websites your news aramas your comic books your smaller blogs even posted about how great this book was and for for great reason and since then we've seen those issues come out we've seen trade paperbacks come out and now just today as of this recording a kickstarter yeah. was launched from skybound and this is the first title that skybound's doing for what they're calling their deluxe signature edition which yep. is great because it's their way to get the high-end collectible or volume of a book into mm -hmm. readers hands from a direct from a direct market yeah so and then yeah. for it to, them to pick excellence i don't think they could have picked yeah. a better title because Thank you. the name and the title and the story behind it is pure excellence <laughs> I mean, we just wanted to make things as difficult on ourselves That's as right. possible. Yeah. Like, let's just call the book excellent so that every let's time we have to make... possible bar. Exactly. You know? Let's set the standard, you know, impossibly high, and then we have to keep uh, matching it or exceeding it month after month. So <laughs> Yeah, um, nothing like some motivation for you the whole time you're working. It is motivation. It is motivation. You're like, if this was another book... Maybe I would just think that this scene was okay, but because it's excellence, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna re dialogue the whole thing before, you know, Carr even sees it. It's, it's always just a big secret, like how many drafts and how many things I've changed before Kari even sees it. You know, I always try to, you, know, <laughs> you get to a point where I'm like, yeah, take the, let's take the numbers off. Let's take the numbers <laughs> off at, at this point. Like, I want him to feel like I did this in like one take. You know, like a, like, <laughs> I just sat down and just wrote, you know, the 20 pages straight and it's like, oh, this is perfect. Let's just send it to Kari. So well, it's this, this book is a lot of work. Uh, once we wrap this book up, uh, the next project I do is going to be called Subpar. <laughs> I, I need, I need a break, man. <laughs> like, it's going to be called a little, uh, with a little cover, less. Uh, covers, covers only is what yeah. it's going to be called. <laughs> Stop, man. <laughs> adequate the series yeah yeah but the great thing about this kickstarter is it's gonna what it's be 296 pages right 32 yeah. of those pages are going to be exclusive to this kickstarter campaign with yeah, yeah. Foreign yeah. Scene it is going to be like that right it's going to be a lot of us um it's going to be uh we're going to do the the first issue script the uh, oversized 30 uh 30 page first issue the whole script will be in there uh the original pitch will probably be in there too uh, for all the uh, process junkies like myself, uh, we're going to have a ton of Kari's uh, original sketches and character designs, probably some uh, some initial color work from Emilio, oh, yeah. because we did a lot of color tests before we even started the book, just, you know, testing how the characters were going to look, their cloaks. Uh, the kind of classifications, you know, b between the magicians. And that's why it's, um, you know, we always like like to say that, uh, it, you know, it's, it's the four of us making this book together, you know, like there is no person that is just doing like the one thing that his title suggests that he's doing. You know, Emilio uh, in particular, just talking about this, has has like injected so much of himself and so many ideas, you know, into the book just through our discussions about color and how things were going to look. Emilio was, uh, I think, probably the first person to suggest that, like, the magicians of different classes would oh, actually absolutely. cast in yeah. different colors and we would keep those colors consistent. And, you know, that was something I hadn't even you know thought of but that's basically how this book has been created from the beginning it's a very you know it's a it's a, a team effort and everyone is bringing something very personal and very specific to it and that's why it's uh this has been like an experience that i've never had in comics like i've never worked on a book like this that was as this kind of collaborative as as this one has been so it's been yeah, really fun this this is one of those books where everyone's bringing like a hundred and ten percent. No one's just doing a job, you know. Like sometimes, yeah. like admittedly, there are sometimes when you work on projects where you're just like, "Look, this is just a job to me. I need to get it done." But everyone is going above and beyond, honestly, what they even need to do because the there's a passion behind this book from all of our. It's not just me and Brandon. It's everybody. That's just we all want to see this thing succeed, and it's all something that we all felt like 
boy, we wish we had this when we were of a certain age and, and coming up and trying to figure out the world. We wish we had a book like this that completely spoke to us because it, it didn't exist. You know, like I, I'm a lifelong comic book fan, but I always did have a thing in the back of my mind that whether it was conscious or not, where I was like, boy, I, I mean, I, I, I relate to Peter Parker, but I don't completely relate to Peter Parker because mm. we, we come from a different place, you know, like mm. it's, there's always that little thing in the back of your mind where it's like, boy, I wish there was a couple more people of color and the cow books when I, that I was reading when I was growing up. So it feels like a, a privilege and almost a responsibility to kind of create cow books that reflect ourselves. And I think that's one thing about our our team is that we're all creators of color trying to put something out into the world that does speak to, you know, the other a little bit, Mm -hmm. while at the same time being relatable to to everybody, hopefully. And it's great because you mentioned that. And I mean, you've been noted as your earlier influences being like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Youngblood, Wildcats, Spawn, and then not to mention manga and hip hop. And you can kind of see like, even before knowing that, you can kind of see that in the art of the book or the pacing of the book or some of the imagery within the book. And then also from Brandon's words, you know, I, no hiding. I mean, I, I grew up near DC, but I don't have the, the, the culture that a lot of these other people that are reading it or the culture where you came from, from your experiences, but I can draw from my own experiences from those pages. And I also can kind of see your point of view of where you're coming from, which I think makes this story so great within excellence. Because at first you want to say, a lot of times when you try to describe a book to someone that hasn't read it, you Mm -hmm. usually try to use movie references or something Mm. to smash two together to kind of say, hey, like these We do it a lot too. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's just the the normal thing to do. And I've even said, I hate doing it, but I do it as well. Uh So when you first look at it, you're like, hey, you know, it's kind of like, harry potter but it's not really harry potter it's kind of i mean there's no way to really describe this it's just like man it's hard for me to describe (laughs) i mean we we definitely use that harry potter line a lot but when you read this book it really has nothing to do with harry potter at all (laughs) there's wands there's magic yeah there's magic but that's 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 pretty much it even when kari was just talking about hey peter parker when, when you read this book i immediately um, think of Miles Morales just because it kind of sure. that that mm-hmm. culture, but you, it doesn't really. I will say, if you're a fan of Miles Morales, you should read Excellence. But mm-hmm. if you're not going to get the same story, it's I mean, just- we. I, I I think one of the things that I think is working about the book is I feel that it the book is very emotionally honest in a way that it allows multiple people to kind of plug themselves into it. And that happens even just amongst the team. You know, there are different kind of scenes and emotions and kind of family problems or issues that a lot of people can see themselves in. And, you know, you know, Kari had a great, um, a, you know, kind of like a great exchange about how, you, if you just want a book that is about kind of like cool action and cool costumes and a kind of really frantic, intense pace, you can, you can still read this book and enjoy it for that. But when you come back on that second and third read, when you take another look, you're going to see that there, there's a little something extra there. There's a little something extra that's kind of creating the foundation of this book. And we think that that is kind of what really makes it special. And, you know, the book, we we want the book to work on multiple levels, because if you don't want to, you know, dive, you know, two or three layers deep, you can still read this book and enjoy it and enjoy the story and enjoy the the cliffhangers and the twists and, you know, the unexpected surprises. But if you want to really kind of dive deep into this kind of idea of like generational trauma and fathers and sons and expectations and responsibilities, I think that there's a lot, there's a lot there for you. So I want to make it, it's, it's, it's a book that I think a lot of people can and have been able to take different things from and that's what is really exciting about making it that everyone's kind of quick also real quick before we get any further 
you might notice there's a URL on the screen right now, excellenceisreal.com. Okay. If you go to that, that will take you to the Kickstarter campaign where you can sit there and back this project. It is, as of right before we record this, it is fully funded, so that's great to hear. But they have some great stretch goals. They have some great add-ons coming up. So right. get in, back the book. And there's some amazing tiers going on within this just before their stretch goals, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. We've got uh we got the hardcover, which is the you know the the main uh, the the main draw. But we also Kari is doing a a series of uh, rookie trade like rookie trading cards yes, for sir. our We're amazing right cast. There's that's the one I had to jump on. Oh, that's the one you got. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think Thank you'll you. enjoy those. We have. Thank you. Quite Thank more you. than that have been advertised. On yes, way. yeah. It's more more coming soon, and uh, we got a couple of uh, amazing prints. A couple of uh, Kari's like most more uh, most popular covers available as prints. There's gonna I got be a some, lot of sketches I got to do. Yeah, I got a lot of sketches. It's gonna be like some sketch book plates, and it's gonna be a lot and of you get the uh, opportunity a lot of to get fun. yourself drawn into to the comic. There part. are still a couple of those left. I think there yeah. there are still two left. You can actually be drawn into an upcoming issue of Excellence. You'll probably have a line too, so you know <laughs> that'll be something to something to look forward to. So uh, it's it's been pretty it's been pretty amazing so far. I mean, the Kickstarter launched I think yesterday at at six a.m. So we got you know fully funded in, in thirty six hours. But you know there's a there's a lot of lot of cool stuff that we'd like to add to this and really make it a, a, a you know a, an experience you know yeah, for funding, fans new and old. The funding is just the beginning. This is we're just getting started. Right. Yeah. We got a lot of days left. Yeah. A lot and, of the, and the campaign, the Kickstarter campaign, goes through to Wednesday, March 24th at noon Pacific time. So you do have some time, but I urge you get in there now and then just <laughs> smile when they start adding those, those stretch goals to it and be happy. Um, you might even get in now and then decide later, hey, I want to change my pledge because- I want to get some more stuff. You know? We gotta get some extras. We got a cool, uh, cool magical journal with like gold pages and, uh, we got a, a sticker sheet. There's a there's just a lot of cool, lot of cool add-ons and and rewards for people. So it's just like wow, you know, <laughs> I would I would pledge for this this Kickstarter. That's how you want to feel. Like even if it if it wasn't your book, you know, that's 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 uh, what we want to do. Yeah, and it, I mean, like we were just talking about getting back to the the book excellence itself. I actually reread the first trade again just because I was like, hey, it's been a while. I kind of want to pick it back up again. And uh, like you just like you said, the second time through, you kind of pick up on some more 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 story, more emotion behind it. And I also want to say a lot of times, remember I said it's hard to describe this book. You also can't describe uh, it as a superhero book, but it's a superhero no. book. And the weird thing also is most superhero books from the big two that we're used to with Marvel and DC, you always know people as Spider-Man, you know people as um, Batman. The mm -hmm. great thing I like about excellence is it's Spencer, but you don't know him as, as Spencer. What, you, what draws you to him and what you know from him is the emotion that he goes through or, or the situations that you have found yourself in. And that's what draws you to his character and his story. And then the people around him, it's like, I still don't, I'm like, his dad's a bad guy. His dad's a good guy. His dad, <laughs> and it's back and forth. And it's like, yeah, it's one of those things where you kind of see the story before where even though his dad seems like a bad guy, he really loves his son and he's doing what he thinks is best for him. But there's also, it's not in that traditional way of where you see it in all the, the, the TV shows or the other stories. Yeah. Do a little bit twist in there that, that adds to it. And then just the artwork within it. Now you were mentioning before with like the, the colors assigned to different um, levels of, you know, yeah, the rankings. Books and yeah. patrons uh -huh. and the, the level of wizardry, which you see it in the elevator scenes where it's like, hey, that's a purple elevator. I'm not yeah. gonna fuck with that because I got his yeah. <laughs> too strong for me. Yeah, right. it's- um, um... <laughs> To speak to that, I, I think one of, the, one of the strong points of this book is that the, the characters are very realistic and, you know, in real life, everyone's not a good guy. Everyone's not a not a bad guy. There's there's layers to people, and and on some days, you know what I'm saying. Like some days, I am I am a saint, and then and then some days, me too. I'm like, you know what? F that man. And we we're doing it like this today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, I feel like that's a thing. One of those things that I love about Spencer is that like, Spencer in his heart, 
is doing the things that he thinks is right, thinks is right. But sometimes you got to, you know, you got to go against the system if you feel like the system is against you. And so to the system that make might make you a villain. And yeah. there's a there's a there's a back and forth with that a lot in this book where it's like people are doing the things that they think justify their actions. And whether that's good or bad depends on your point of view. Right. right. And then and another then you see the common theme throughout, you know, forgiveness, not permission, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, and it's one of those things where um you don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be care- careful very careful here. You don't know everyone's story. You don't know their internal history. So Spencer, because he's the main character, we know his history. We know his motivations. We know the things that have happened to him that have made him think and act and feel a certain way. We don't have that for all of the characters. So that's just something that we want to make all the characters seem very realistic and for them to seem balanced. You know, even though Spencer is the hero of the tale, you know, Spencer does have some really bad habits that contribute to his own problems. Like Spencer is not perfect. He is hard-headed and he is self-righteous and, you know, to a fault. So it's just something that, you know, you always have, when you're doing a creator-owned book, these are the types of things that you can do because, you know, when you're working for, you know, the big two, just as an example, there are certain things that like Peter Parker just will not do. He will just never do. There are certain mistakes that he just cannot make for, you know, a hundred reasons. But when you're dealing with a story where they're actually your characters, you can get, you can determine, like we can decide how far Spencer's going to go, how big is his mistake, you know, how big is his, you know, comeuppance. So it's, it's really just there, you know, there's, there's such freedom in doing a book like this and telling a story like this. And, you know, like Kari mentioned earlier, it, it feels like we have a responsibility to uh we we just wanted to present like several several different layers of this kind of idea of blackness several different layers and several different perspectives and do it in a way where there is really no good guy or bad guy it's like Kari said like what kind of day are they having like you know why why do they feel this way on this certain day and how is that going to determine what they do when they meet up against the challenge like how are they going to respond to it so it's just, uh, it's been a really, just the experience of just writing this book has been, it's just, it has been challenging and it's been cathartic and it's been painful and it's been, you know, uplifting like all at the same time. And I feel like that is a, a kind of, kind of three, three dimensional portrayal of, you know, quote unquote, diverse characters that comics doesn't always do very well. You know, the black character is either an absolute saint or he's like a drug lord. You know, there is no in between, there's no gray. And that's that's where this book, is, I think, is succeeding. You know, the, the ability to kind of depict those shades of gray and those kind of judgment calls, like, is this good or bad? Like, why is he behaving this way? So that's, to me, that's kind of, uh, that's what makes the book uh, exciting and then also difficult <laughs> for me to write because sometimes you know things think, that happen you don't want things to, like I don't want I don't want Spencer I don't want this to happen to him but it just it has to it yeah, has you, to you almost feel like grow. a dad punishing your kid when it's I know I know even more so with this book because this book yeah, is all wrapped up in Brandon. dad I, stuff I enjoy punishing our character. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, some more blood. What do we do now? <laughs> right. Oh, I always feel awful after I did. Ah, oh, why did you have to do it like that? Like, you didn't have to take that from him. But yeah. I think also that added complexity, in a, and I mean this in a very, very good way, that adds to that challenge before when you're trying to compare it to, to people that, you know, to get them to read it. Right. Because... Uh, it's more to be like it, it's part Harry Potter, part The Wire. No, that's not that. It's part right. but like, and I like within this, within some of those issues, you have those um, almost like the, the pages of the story that kind of explain what's going on in this issue, like the the quick ones okay. and yeah, yeah, things like uh-huh. that. So you can kind of look at it. So 
if you if you've read the book and you kind of bypass those 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 pages actually have some great yeah. amplifying information. No, no, they're very very important. We right. we use every single page in this book. Absolutely. Every page in the book, every page after the book, and the letters page. Our letters pages have become uh, kind of like a highlight of doing the book too, because just like working on excellence is kind of like a conversation between the four of us. We also want the book to be a conversation like with the readership. So we've also tried to make our letters pages as important to the story that we're trying to tell as the actual pages. So we we are not we are not wasting an inch <laughs> in excellence. We're using every single bit of it to try to tell this story. Yeah, those infographics are not just like, you know, cool that no. they they a lot of times they are little clues into where we're headed with this story mm -hmm. going forward. And I yep. found myself, because I'm, I, I say that because I was guilty of it. <laughs> then I found myself re getting into the issue and I was like, wait a minute. It's that old that old college student thing where you're like, I'm just going to get, you know, that maybe uh, that's not, I'll, I'll pick up later. But then you're like, oh, I remember seeing that. So then you go back. So that's why I learned from my mistakes and make sure you look at those pages. Yeah, um, I, I like every it. page. The, the, the first time I read Watchmen, you know, I didn't read any of those things he put mm -hmm. in the back of the book. I just, yeah. I need to get back to the next chapter. And yeah. then when you go back and read it the second time, you actually read some of that stuff and you're like, oh, this actually has, this this adds something to the story. It fleshes it out even more and it gives you more context for what's happening in the book. But on your first read through, you may not even realize that at all. Right. <laughs> right. And yeah, read every page in, in excellence. It's all important. So, so we've have we've had what twelve issues so far published, right? With ten on the way. Ten. Yeah, ten issues. Ten issues. My my bad. Yeah. And each one of those covers are fantastic. Uh, my favorite, of course, which a lot of people talk about, is is that that juice, the juice homage. <laughs> because when you when you the great cover. If you haven't read the book and you see it come out, you're like, oh, that's cool. I like that because you relate to the movie Juice but it lends itself to the story so well, especially within that issue. Yeah, mm. it, it yeah. completely, I mean, that was one of those things. I, I was literally, I was watching Juice one day, because as you do, because you got to watch <laughs> Juice at least like once a year. I mean, why, why not? And as I was reading it, I was just like, oh my God, like this is a, like the relationship <laughs> between those two characters and Juice, like this is us right here. Like this is us. <laughs> Like you, we have to do this. I, I knew it immediately. I had to draw that cover months before I drew it. And then did, did uh, Sanford Green copy you with Bitterroot? I'm just kidding. No, he did not. No, no, no. 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 We, we were all doing it at the same time. I uh, think it's just, we are from a certain generation yep. where mm. like those touchstones are in our brain. Cause yep. I drew that cover, didn't tell anybody. Mm. And then like maybe I don't, weeks or months later, Brandon, I think you saw it first. Yeah. And you were like, oh, oh boy, well, Sanford just well, did the same thing. Well, not only ha what happened was that I talked to Sanford at a con, like I ran into him at a con and I think they had already started their cover series. Mm -hmm. And I just had a feeling that you know i had a feeling they were going to do a juice cover yeah, too so theme. i just like <laughs> I, I asked them i was like you know you know we got a, a you know a juice cover coming so yeah you guys doing juice too he's like, oh yeah yeah we're doing one i'm like yeah yeah we're, we're doing be one a sin so, not to within that theme of cover yeah i know i know they were yeah so i'm i am glad ours came out first but you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh but no we're just all in the same we were all on the on the same wavelength i mean i i was kind of jealous that they did do like a purple rain cover oh, not that God. i didn't yeah. i didn't think that you know we were gonna do a purple rain cover but i was just i was kind of jealous of that one so you're saying there's a purple rain cover with me <laughs> Maybe there is yeah. not. We have to do. We have to do it. Although, although I did have an idea at the end, of, at the beginning of every story arc, I might want to do an homage to something, but okay. I'm not saying nothing now because <laughs> <laughs> keep that to myself. Yeah, yeah. It just don't even tell me. Just like send it in, and I'll and I'll be surprised. So I want to get back <laughs> more to the Kickstarter. 
I've talked about how great the covers are on, on the actual issues, but the mm. cover on the Kickstarter alone, I mean, that right there, that, mean, that pops so well that it's, and being a hard cover, if you're a fan of just excellence, it, it's almost like you have, it's like, I have to have this. <laughs> and it's a wraparound too. A so wraparound. we were That's very, cool. very, I mean, I was so excited when that cover came through. I mean, every, every time Kari sends another cover through, I'm like, oh, this is my favorite. But uh, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that uh, the the Kickstarter is probably my favorite. Just what he what he did with kind of like the the white space on the on the back of it. It's just it's just I I just love it. It's just like the the paneling behind Spencer. You know, like clips from the book, and it's just it's 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 really it's really special. Like we've been we've actually had that Kickstarter cover done for a while, so. You know, I think I like, I showed it to like a couple of people. Quite like, do not show this to anybody else. Delete this after you look at it. So I'm really happy that it's finally out now and that people get to see it. And wouldn't that cover look great with like some me metallic foil accents? Yeah, I, mean, it would. I think so. I, I definitely, definitely would. I when when we're working on this book because I do do a lot of covers for for other companies, and a lot of times, you know, when you work for Marvel or DC, they want very specific like we want an action shot we want something that can be put on a t-shirt we want this and that uh, which i don't have any problem with i'm happy to draw those things all day long but for excellence i want to do something a little different where it felt like something that you could put on a coffee table where if if someone saw that who's not even into comics they might be like yo what it what is that that <laughs> right. why does that look like a like a jazz cover like why does that look like you know the intro to catch me if you can like i was I just gonna say that that is one of my favorite intros of all time i well, love it's, it's I, the same influences man it's all so yeah bad. it's all yeah that's bad. that's something that's also been um cool about working on this book because you know when me and Kari started on it we just kind of knew of each other we had you know like facebook friends and met at cons and we had had a couple of really kind of like deep dive conversations into excellence but you know, I didn't, like, I know, like, I've learned so much about Kari just from working on this book together. Well, I'll, I'll write a scene and put it in there and then he'll be like, oh yeah, something exactly the same happened to me too. So that, that's the kind of experience that it's been, you know, working on this book since the beginning. And it's just, it's, it's just great. And I feel like that it comes through on the page. I think that you can really tell that, you know, the four of us, we enjoy making this book together, you know, and I think that you can see that kind of that, you know, that like love and, and collaboration on the page and it makes it feel like it's not just you know, it's not, it, it shouldn't feel like it's just, oh, yeah, Brandon wrote a script and then people like, because that's not how this book is being created. Like, that's not the feel of it. Everyone is contributing something very specific and very personal. And it should feel like this kind of amalgamation of like all four of us. And it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. It's really special. Yeah, and I do want to double down and say if, if the viewers are watching this and they're kind of on the fence about it, I'll tell you, Image Comics, the website, you can actually read the first issue for free, right? Please. Yes, you can. Yes. You and I will tell you, once you read the first issue, you're going to want to read the rest. Read and that first issue. The first issue's good, too. Yes. Real good. <laughs> it's good. I mean, it's I like, say, it's, play, it's pretty good. It's, I, won't, I want to say I, it's a trailer. I won't pretend. I actually, I was really happy with that script. So I was, you know. Yeah, I worked. Because, I worked really hard to get it to that point. So and, enjoy and, it. I don't want to say it's like a trailer or a preview because there's, there's you definitely get the gist of the story, but it's a great mm -hmm. first chapter that's going to make mm -hmm. you want to read more because you automatically, like we've been talking about in this video, you get the feel of the environment, the the, the you get the emotion of the characters, Kari's art with mixed with Brandon's writing. I mean, it's what you want from a creator-owned book. Where you guys even touched about it, where the things you want to see Spider-Man or Miles or some of these other people do that don't do, you're gonna see uh -huh. in this book. And, and yeah. like you said, it's almost like they're. It's not a superhero. It's not a, an anti-villain. You know, not an anti-hero. Right. But it's just a, a story that no matter where you come from, what culture, where you grew up, there's something in there that will draw something out of you where you yeah. can relate like, to what do, someone do, in that book like, is going through. Do Do you have parents? It's like, have yeah. you ever, have you ever felt like you weren't living up to their expectations of you? Have you, you know, you have uh, daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> if you have daddy issues, then come to excellence. Yeah. 
we will show you some daddy issues. <laughs> I also wanted to bring up also, Carly. So you were born in Boston. Yes. But now, now here in, we go. <laughs> but now live in the boroughs, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, I've actually the funny thing is, so I'm I'm well known for you know, being a Bostonian, born and raised, but I've actually lived in New York longer than I ever lived in Boston because I was born in Boston, moved to New York when I was 17 years old. I'm 42 now. <laughs> like, I'm, I've been in New York much longer than I was ever in Boston. Do you, do, you, uh, <laughs> do you get a lot of the flack from the New Yorkers with the Boston or... It's, I get it from Brandon the most. That's a funny part. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm from neither. Giving up on me at this point. They're like, he's just going to do what he's going to do, man. What? Just let him do it. Uh, uh, you know, I and, enjoy and, it. And it's even worse because our editor is also obs obsessed with this Boston and Tom Brady. And it's just, it is just, it's it's the one thing about them that I just don't like, that I just honestly will say. It's the one thing about them that just bothers me, like the Tom Brady and the Patriots and the Celtics of it all. It's just, you know, it's hard Listen, to it, it is my, it is on me to make sure that everyone p understands that Boston is not just the departed and like Ben Affleck movies. You know, like this, <laughs> there's a whole other side so Boston the no town. One ever talks about bank robbery. And I gotta I gotta rep that, man. It's not just Matt Damon, you know? <laughs> it's funny. Not just Marky Mark, I promise. Oh, well that's a relief. <laughs> we talked about the Kickstarter. Once again, the, the URL the viewers see on the screen right now, excellenceisreal.com. That will take you right to the campaign. But I also have the link in the description of this video that will take you there as well. But I also want to bring up something that's often brought up when the comic catches people's attention and the story is so compelling. The na natural recourse when people read comics, especially in today, especially with the power of the MCU, especially with Disney+, Plus, especially with Amazon, especially with Skybound and other titles. Can you give the viewers, is there any news on excellence maybe being brought to the big screen or the small screen? <laughs> Um, right. we can't share much we can't share much at, at this point but um, your, your instincts are good let's just say that it would and delight me to no end to have excellence come through in a variety of mediums uh, whether that be toys or video games or movies or TV shows I feel like the, the world that we have created uh, would would be quite well suited for many different places. And I hope that there's years more of excellence to come. That there was gonna go. be my follow-up question was I was gonna ask if, I mean, granted, as creators, you have- right? Anywhere. I thought like, that was- I, That was pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> I was gonna say, would you come prefer on. a movie or a TV show where movie you get that two and a half hour quick hit, TV show you can get that episodic content of where you, you know, really flesh out storylines. But I mean, natural reaction would be like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah." But I, I was just kind of what you got? I had one over the other. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I, I I do think that excellence would work great as a TV show. I feel like there is an episodic nature of the property already, to where, like, it, the way I see it is, while while Spencer is our main protagonist, there are a lot of characters in this book that I myself want to explore. And I feel like right. only, you could only really explore that with a TV show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A movie would have to be all about Spencer. And I, I want and more I'm Overseer in love with all these characters. And Monique and- Oh, everybody wants more Monique. Yeah. It's like every time, you know- She's just badass. A, I, it's, I just, I love her. I love her so much. Yeah, give people what they want, man. They want Yeah, Monique. yeah. No. And I, I agree, there's just, um. There's not a lot, even though it feels like there's a lot of space, like 20 pages an issue is not a lot of space. So I would also echo Kari and I think Excellence would do uh, fantastic on TV where it had a little more space to kind of illuminate some of these uh, 
uh, characters and concepts that we're kind of having to like skip over a little bit because you know just to keep the keep the train moving. So um, yeah, I'd like to see it uh, as a TV show, and I'd like to see this as a, like a statue, like action figure freak. You bring up a great point about action figures, and I think there's no better place to be then at Skybound, if you're going to start talking about action figures, because Skybound does some great action figures. They and, do, don't they? And if Skybound could could watch right now and, and really sit there and go, you think I have a point? Where are the action figures? Excellent action it's figures. what Brian is saying. Hey, <laughs> hey, Robert Kirkman, you heard this man. He is demanding. There, there's a reason why Spencer's got a new outfit every day. <laughs> Kari is already getting ready. It's like, yeah, the snow variant. Yes. I remember that conversation too. That I think that was issue five for anyone that hasn't read it. But Kari's like, uh, can I give Spencer like a like a like a snow like a snow suit, like snow gear? And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> Please do that. Smart. I know what I'm so doing. Smarter than me. Sure at the next Skybound Expo or the Comic Vault Live. We're going to get introduced some excellence action figures. <laughs> Ready here for us. Tell them. Is. I'm, I'm totally I would kidding love to see viewers, it, by the way, but that would be magnificent to see, by the way. I would love to see it. And then, real quick, before I let you guys go, I definitely appreciate okay. you guys' time on here. Both of you, I'd like to let the viewers know where they, where they can find you on social media and if you have anything else in the works that people, one, can follow you on or, you know, I've seen, I follow you on Instagram and Twitter, but where else are you on, on social media? And if you have any other special projects that the viewers can know about. Um, I am on uh, Instagram and Twitter at the same handle. It's brights247. It's B-W-R-I-T-E-S 247. Uh, I have a personal website, which is brandonthomasrights.com. Um, right now, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of DC stuff. <laughs> <laughs> coming out for me that I'm very excited about. I did, I contributed to the recent uh, Future State event. I wrote a Future State Outsiders, which was a backup feature in the next Batman. And then I wrote a standalone Future State Aquaman series about Jackson Hyde and a grown up uh, Andy Curry having a cool dimensional uh, adventure that uh, people seem to really like. And then I've done um, quite a few shorts. I actually have a short uh, coming up with that guy right there, Kai Randolph. We're going to do Hi. a story for uh, Batman uh, Black and White that will appear, I think, in issue six. So oh uh, there's uh, and then there there are some other some other things coming coming shortly. Some coming very announcements coming very shortly. But I will I will be around. So it'll be more excellence uh, in in your future. Uh, a little more DC stuff, and uh, I got a couple other big projects out there on the horizon that uh, that haven't been announced just yet. So I am uh, I am keeping busy. This is actually the busiest that I've ever been, and Excellence has opened a lot of uh, doors for me uh, at other companies. And I'm trying to just trying to uh, make the make the most of the opportunities and uh, do some cool stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh... I'm on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, it's just Kari Randolph, one word, at Kari Randolph. Um, I've got actually a bunch on the way. Um, there's, of course, more excellence coming, as always. Uh, I have a Wolverine story coming out uh, in Wolverine uh, Black, White, and Blood coming out next month. Uh, that's a 10-page story with uh, Kelly Thompson that is Super dope. I cannot wait for people to see that. Um, Brand, did I show you any of that yet? No, no, oh. send it to me. <laughs> I should have, yeah. <laughs> um, as Brandon mentioned, we have a Batman story coming out and Batman Black and White. Um, I have a few more covers on the way from DC, including one that has not even been announced yet, but it might get announced like this week. Um, so that should be interesting. <laughs> That that's be funny shocking. because because uh, I I know what you're talking about now. That so. should be shocking. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff on the way that I'm very excited about. Yeah, and I will also put links to both their social media and and Brandon's website. I'll put links to all that in the description of this video as well, so you can guys can just click on that, follow them. Definitely want to follow them, especially 
with showing the artwork, showing more information about this Kickstarter. Sometimes oh, we're yeah. talking about, about the stretch goals before you get the updates or what's being worked on. And both of them are great to follow on social media. And if you haven't done so already, I strongly urge you to go to excellenceisreal.com. Check out all that they're offering within this Kickstarter and back it if you can. I don't think you'll regret it. I'm super excited too. Like I said, I double down. I have to have those trading cards. Trading cards, especially <laughs> then comic book trading cards right now have caught fire. A lot of that yeah. Marvel Impel series. But I've been talking about how I think comic book trading cards compared to sports trading cards, there's a lot of value to catch up on there and to get something exclusive from Kai Randolph from Kickstarter might be something to have on. For real, I was just excited. One of my favorite things of all time was when Jim Lee did that entire set of X-Men cards back in the 90s. And yeah. I was just like, oh my God, I got, if I'm not drawing a hundred cards, that's not happening. <laughs> but if I can just get like a, a nice chunk of just cards that are all me, I've never had trading cards before. So I think it's, uh, it's something I'm pretty excited about. I, I think that's awesome. And, I, and I'm not trying to stress that tier, but that was my favorite from the training cards. But like I said, there's signed book plates. It's a good tier. There's a bunch of other great tiers up there. Excellenceisreal.com, or you can click the link in the description. Again, I want to thank Brandon and Kari for being on here. I hope, I hope, hope, hope you guys come back again so we can talk about more excellence or more just projects in general. Always welcome here at Simple Men's Comics. With that being said, guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot. Man. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Big vibes. Look, I'm about my plaid, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag filled. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bull. Quit to say my piece, I'm so after school special. She brainy but.